Go ahead. My name is Josh Costazzi. I'm the fire chief for the Rising Star Volunteer Fire Department. I'm going to give you a tour today of our new facility. Uh, tonight we're having our grand opening and uh, uh, our facility was built. Uh, we've had 165 days turnkey on this project. Uh, we've worked a little over 5,000 man hours uh, that we spent time donating labor to put into this building. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much a, a, a tin building, uh, although it does have some of the modern, some, some real nice uh, technological features that we didn't have with our old facilities. Uh, number one being that uh, we've got, as you can hear, the highway out here in front of us uh, gives us Main Street frontage for our business. Our trucks are in and out uh, of the station right on Main Street. Uh, before we were down a side street, kind of hit off uh, out of the beaten path. Uh, as we start in the front door here, uh, you immediately walk into our truck base. We have a six bay facility, uh, about 5,000 square foot. Uh, as you go to the left or go back to the south, you go into our conference room. Our conference room is open to the community uh, to host homecomings, uh, family reunions, any of those type gatherings. Uh, we, we'll lease our facility out to you. As you make your way on past that, we have uh, a full staff kitchen. Uh, it also uh, will use in the in the emergency operations center that, that's built upstairs. Uh, it ties those together, gives us a place to centralize right downtown uh, for our community to be able to, to respond to the needs of the community in a, in a more rapid pace. Um, it's also built with the only public restroom downtown for the downtown activities. We have our hometown Christmas here. We also have open air market, uh, Main Street Market and we, uh, we allow, we'll be open those days as well to allow the folks to use the restroom facilities. Father in heaven, we're grateful for this evening that we can come together as a community, Father. We're indeed thankful for all of the blessings that we enjoy, the freedoms that we enjoy, the times that we can come together like this to celebrate, Father, as a community. We're so thankful, Father, for this effort this new building that we have. We're thankful, Father, for the men and the women that serve our, our department, Father, the work and the commitments and sacrifices that they make. I want to give you guys a little bit of history real quick. And they told me that uh, we had to be done by 6 o'clock, so you're in luck. I had a 45-minute speech prepared, uh, but you're going to get out with about five, so feel, feel lucky. Uh, the year was, according to some local historians, 1969, 1970, 71, somewhere in there, uh, there was there was a small ceremony that was taking place, not not unlike the one that we're having today. Um, a group of hardworking laborers standing back and looking at what they accomplished after several weeks of hard work. This small celebration would forever mark their place in the history of the fire, Rising Star Fire Department. Um, a new station, a station that the members could be proud of, a station that would allow a more efficient way to house the fire equipment that would be better suited to handle the elements. A station that was built by the volunteers, by townspeople, and by people that just wanted to be involved and help. It was an all metal construction, four bays, 25 feet deep, overhead doors, insulation, good lighting, no living facilities. In 1969, it was almost the same as what you can see back over here today. Volunteers trained one time a month. When the phone rang, it was picked up and listened to, and then someone hurried to the station to sound the alarm to let the others know. The first arriving volunteer got to try, got to drive the truck, and that's still a race sometimes today. First one, to drive the truck, it's always fun. In 1969, it was still an acceptable practice to ride on the back of the trucks, and, ski, and uh, seat belts were scarce to non-existent. Personal protective equipment consisted of blue jeans and whatever shirt you had on at the time. In 1969, the call volume was one call for every 30 days, fires only. In 2015, that call volume was 1.5 calls every other day, an 800% increase. Times have changed, but the building had not. Today, medical calls make up a majority of the fire department responses, and, and today's firefighters train and prepare for a vast range of emergency situations from fires to hazardous material spills to car collisions and anything else that you can imagine going wrong. Today, our fire department works in a carefully choreographed dance with our neighboring agencies, particularly Seep Springs, May, Cross Plains Volunteer Fire Departments, in order to maximize the efficiency of all the departments and the limited resources that we have. Today, our firefighters are expected to be professionals who at the drop of a hat will leave their family, their job, their life, 
and respond to an emergency and roll out to your 911 call. Yet for all the differences, one thing has remained the same until now, the fire station, the hub of all things emergency. In 2001, new lighting was added inside the aging structure to help brighten things up and increase safety. And in 2012, the uh, station got an extension to the back half to assist in housing a near $200,000 brand new piece of equipment. And uh, as more time passed, the more obvious the station's age and limitations became. Uh, a couple of examples. The fire department of today handles a lot of medical problems, yet the old station didn't have any place for walk-ins. The equipment of today is larger, so vehicles barely fit, and the firefighters have to basically be contortionists in order to, to be able to walk around and get inside the trucks before they pull out the bays. The equipment, uh, having, having to, to be contortionist, it slows their response times. And most significantly, the station insulation lacked any way to be updated or refurbished, making it very possible that icy conditions could take a toll on pumps, water lines, especially the ones that were running overhead the doors. We fixed a couple of those leaks while I was here, came into town, and there was water all over the street there wasn't supposed to be. Um, and so that leads me to all to this, is that, that every city manager should take pride in the city that he or she serves. Every city manager should be able to name projects that made a lasting difference in the well-being of the community, that they had a hand in those projects, no matter how small that hand, that they had a hand in accomplishing those things. And this station we stand in tonight is one of mine, one of my shining accomplishments that, I, that I'm very proud to have been a part of. When it comes down to it, there's perhaps no more important facility in town than, that, than this fire station. Situated within the central area that we serve, first responders based here are the only thing that stands between all of you and, and me and tragedy should disaster strike. Assisting in the station was clearly the right thing to do, but be assured that it wasn't an easy path. For years, the old station was like an old tool, heavily worn, but still functional. It took the spirited leadership, vision, and innovation of President Wayne Jones, Fire Chief Josh Constancio, Assistant Chief Terry Ware, Training Chief Jared Horton, and all the membership of the Rising Star Fire Department to get this ball rolling. A dream that started in 2007 with a simple set of plans and three bids has turned into what we sit in today. My deepest thanks to all who've had a hand in this project for the many hours that they worked to see this dream to reality, to the staff and members of the fire department, to the city council, and most importantly to you, the citizens of this great town, who have helped make this happen. So on behalf of the Rising Star Volunteer Fire Department this evening, I extend to you all a thank you for your unconditional support. To the members and the community members of the city of Rising Star and surrounding area, good afternoon. To hold this dedication as we dedicate the building in the name of the membership and the citizens of this community. To hold devotion and duty above personal wish. To count the sincerity of our service above personal comfort and convenience. And to strive unincreasingly to find a better ways of protecting lives, homes, and property from the ravages of fire and other disasters. This is the life of a Rising Star Volunteer Firefighter. And this is the life led by each and every volunteer firefighter in this country. A family group, you could say. We're all fathers, grandfathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and friends. We are through, through and through firefighters and family. Our devotion to duty is seen in, our, in the history of this department. Our family and friends joke sometimes that we may take the fire service too serious. Each and every one of our firefighters work a 40-hour week job on top of their station responsibilities. This group seldom passes up an opportunity to train or use our talents and abilities to help others. Our sincerity of service comes through, our, comes through as our continuous example to our community and colleagues, always ready to lend a hand or a bit of wisdom and knowledge gained through our training and experience. During the many times when the calls come to action, excuse me, when the calls to action come, we increasingly answer that call, placing ourselves on the line to protect property and lives beyond the property of our community. And for many years, our station has been one of the busiest in the area. And because of our call volume, many of our volunteers could have chose to go to different service organizations. But instead, they chose to stay right here with us. And they keep responding to those calls for service today. By doing this, 
we come to know our community and we know it well. We know the color of every house. We know the people that live in those houses. When the ambulance can't find the address, they always know to get us coming so we'll know where to go. Such is the passion and the attention to detail in this community that we serve. We love our people and we love helping them. The old fire station has been home to most of us for over 45 years. And today we dedicate the new facility in the name of our volunteers and the citizens we so proudly serve. To our families, we are grateful of the many hours that you let us serve. And you can be proud of the many hours we do and for all that we give. For the lives that we've touched and for the impact that we've made to honor this building, the honor of this building is our legacy. The memories of the Rising Star Volunteer Fire Department 2016 for 74 years of continued unselfish service and dedication. Thank you. Official ribbon cutting for the brand new fire station, multi purpose facility here at Rising Star. We have several dignitaries. We have Mr. Zach Cabo. Tony Silver's captain. Smokey Bear is kind of the silent partner. This facility is going to do great things and serve so many people here in the county. We'll get uh, to know more about this facility after the break. But right now, it's time to get this party started and do the official cutting. Go right ahead.